The great veiled romances of the 20th century Love is both a blessing and a curse The great veiled romances of the 20th century A few of the best and a lot of the worst Welcome to the Great Failed Romances of the 20th Century. I'm singer, songwriter, and historian, Teddy Gray. And I'm singer, songwriter, and historian, Sam Kaufman. So, Teddy, which scintillating relationship will we be discussing today? Today we'll be looking into the brief, troubled marriage between Ernest Borgnine and Ethel Merman. Ah, uh, 32-day love, short and sweet. Anything but, my friend. So, long and sour? Oh, like this relationship! Ernest Borgnine's acting career began in the early 1950s, and he played supporting roles in a variety of classic films, including From Here to Eternity and The Wild Bunch. In 1955, he even won the Academy Award for Best Actor for his performance in Marty. In the 1960s, he was cast as the title character of the TV show McHale's Navy, which brought him even greater fame and recognition. Ethel Merman was an even bigger star than Borgnine, albeit in different areas. Referred to as the undisputed first lady of the musical comedy stage, Ethel is known for her iconic performances in musicals such as Annie Get Your Gun, There's No Business Like Show Business, Gypsy, and Hello Dolly. With numerous Tony Awards under her belt and an Oscar for Borgnine, these two masters were in the prime of their careers. However, their vibes couldn't have been more different. Ernest Borgnine's public persona was that of a gruff, tough, homely man. He was a salt-of-the-earth type of guy. Ethel, however, was the glamorous queen of Broadway and a brash and hard-headed woman of the stage. Because of this, their pairing didn't seem to make much sense. Ethel was used to getting her way and was not the type of woman who could be easily pushed around. By the time the two met and hit it off in the early 1960s, Ethel had already been married three times and Ernest twice. So when the decision was made that they would be married in 1964, they both already had set precedents for fleeing the scene if they were unsatisfied. Wait, you can do that? Oh, I keep forgetting I'm chained to this. Hey, all you gotta do is gnaw that arm off. Nothing's stopping you. Almost immediately, their marriage began to unravel, and the two both recalled a disastrous honeymoon. From Ernest's perspective, Ethel was a nightmare, flying into fits of jealous rage when Ernest was more frequently recognized than her. He said that this bruised her ego, and she couldn't take it. However, from Ethel's point of view, Ernest was the problem. She was convinced that Borgnine was only marrying her for her money, and her suspicions grew stronger as the honeymoon went on. She even called her parents at one point during the honeymoon, and told them she felt she had made a huge mistake. By the time the two returned to L.A., the writing was already on the wall. It was curtains for the two of them. What a shame. So, how's your escape going? Ugh, this hand is gonna go right to my hips. But whatever, it's cheat day. The couple separated on August 7th, 1964, just 32 days after they had been married. They were officially divorced in October. Their marriage has gone down in history as one of Hollywood's shortest. It quickly became somewhat of a punchline, even to the people in it. In Ethel Merman's memoir, the chapter titled My Marriage to Ernest Borgnine consisted only of one page, and it was left entirely blank. For Ethel, Ernest was her fourth attempt at marriage, and would prove to be her last. For Ernest, however, he would marry two more times, finally finding his soulmate in 1973 when he married Tova Traceness, who he stayed with until his death. Wow, a short marriage, and a short episode, and I'm a short guy. And you have a short temper, and a short dick. Should I keep going? Short, 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 short. So, Teddy, tell us about the song. And in the spirit of this episode, make it snappy, will you? This song is a 32-second ditty that's both an ode to the tumultuous marriage between Ernest Borgnine and Ethel Merman, but also an endorsement for shorter relationships themselves. Why drag it out after the passion's gone? Ernest and Ethel never did. Why should any of you? Time! Now, Teddy, I have some more questions. Ethel Merman is such a beloved musical theater performer. Is the song done in a sweeping Broadway style? Are there any nods to her iconic singing voice, perhaps? Ah, uh, no, there are not. Ah. Then did you take it in a more gruff, salt-of-the-earth direction to pay tribute to Ernest Borgnine? Perhaps a sea shanty or a military stomp? Uh, no, it's done in a uh, honky-tonk hoedown style. We played the banjo on it. Huh. 
Now, does that style have anything to do with either of these people? Uh, it does not, no. Huh. I just have one more question for you, then. You're a bit of a hack, aren't you? Why don't you get back to that arm? Oh, sure thing. It's only 32 calories. Sit back and enjoy 32 Day Love. Ernest Ethel said I do, and five weeks later they were through. I think we all should take a cue from their 32 Day Love. Never try to drag it out after you start to have your doubts and fear that you can live without your 32 Day Love. And that's just how it ought to be, oh what a precious gift. To have a love so passionate, so fiery, so swift. I'm sure it would have been more fun if it had just been 31. Why let it last more than a month, oh 32 Day Love. The great failed romances of the 20th century Love is both a blessing and a curse The great failed romances of the 20th century A few of the best and a lot of the worst